Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome once again to these lectures on cultural studies um, being brought to you by NPTEL, the National Program on Technology Enhanced Learning. We are in module 3 of these lectures on cultural studies and uh, as you are aware, this module is entitled Sites of Cultural Studies, uh, which I explained in uh, the last lecture. Uh, nevertheless, let us do a quick recap. As I had mentioned um, in the last lecture, sites are locations where uh, all these theories that we have learned and key concepts that we had learned about uh, culture and cultural studies are played out, are worked out and our endeavor in these uh, lectures in module 3, um, uh, 3 is to, uh, to see how um, these concepts have been applied. To the effect, we looked at the body in the last lecture and we saw that we may make a distinction between the organic body, which is the pre-social body and the performed body, which is the social body. Uh, we saw that in, in uh, reality, in cultural practice, bodies are no longer simply organic bodies or pre-social bodies. Bodies are from birth the social bodies or um, what is known as the performed bodies. Bodies are from birth appropriated by culture. We saw that the body and culture are related from uh, from uh, you know from the from the beginning in the sense a we saw that it was related the body and culture are related by you know from the moment of birth okay uh, body and culture are also also if you look at the slide here are also related in the sense that embodiment affects perception and interpretation okay today the paradigm the current paradigm a strong paradigm in philosophy in the social sciences and humanities is that of embodiment and embodiment our perceptions and interpretations are seen to come from embodiment, which affects identity and knowledge and is the, the it is through the body that we encode social values and changes. So, we moved in uh, you know in the last lecture we an important point was the shift from uh, the so called pre social organic body to the social body. Next, we uh, read from Chris Barker's the sage dictionary of cultural studies, where he said that the body has within cultural studies been stylized and performed by the workings of culture, whereas the body was always understood in a commonsensical sort of way as simply physical flesh and bones of an organism going by the dualistic philosophy of Descartes of Cartesian dualism, where mind and body were uh, seen as separate uh, substances or substrates. Uh, Barker on the other hand uh, argues in these lines that the body has been stylized and performed by the workings of culture, uh, making the idea of the body as a pre-social, pre-cultural object impossible to sustain. Then we saw through Michel Foucault's, Michel Foucault's important book, Discipline and Punish, where um, he draws a history of speaking about the body, okay? the discourse about the body and uh, the, the body as a social instrument, right? as a social entity. And uh, this is the shift that uh, we saw in the last lecture the body which was a target of punishment and incarcerate through incarceration of imprisonment okay in by the 19th century by the discourses of the 19th century human sciences the body uh, is you know the control over the body is not so much overt as 
something that is prescriptive. Okay? The body is to be prescribed and controlled through the what he calls normalizing techniques uh, of the discourses of, of 19th century human sciences. We saw um, all of this in a bit of detail for instance, uh, while talking about his, uh, hysteria, the hysterization of the female body, about deviant sexuality etcetera. Okay? So, the control is now by the 19th century not one of uh, you know visible punishment, but of um, over uh, sorry of covert so to speak okay? uh, normalizing techniques through writing about the body in various domains. Next, we saw looked at the concept of body work and um, we saw that work on the body that we perform okay? is through regimes of diet uh, of fashion of uh, cosmetic surgery, health promotion strategies that call out to you to uh, you know uh, to have the perfect body so to speak the fit body, the totally healthy body and um, exercises and organ transplants. So, um, body work involves um, all of these and more and the, this is this is how the body is rendered a cultural body or a body in, in um, a body that is already social. Finally, we, um, we ended with the new disciplinary apparatuses uh, that seek uh, today in contemporary times uh, to, to discipline the body, to subject the body to society and we found that some of these apparatuses, disciplinary apparatuses are uh, which are slightly different from uh, the apparatuses we saw the discourses of the 19th century human sciences. And these are for instance, uh, aggressive uh, health promotion schemes, right? the medicalization of lifestyles, the marketing of health promotion uh, schemes and medicalization and a different idea or discourse about health attitude and morality, wherein uh, even you know uh, leading a moral life includes attention to your health, attention to uh, you know to the body as most importantly as prescribed by these new disciplinary apparatuses. So, uh, today we will move on to another site of um, cultural studies which is uh, space and um, the key source texts um, in this lecture from which I draw the points and I from which I also quote are again Chris Barker's cultural studies theory and practice and uh, promote Gay Nair's introduction to cultural studies. Well, first a look at what again Michel Foucault tells us about space and uh, Foucault as quoted in Barker and let us read from here. A whole history remains to be written of spaces. Okay, he says that space is something whose history needs to be described, whose history needs to be delineated, the ways in which mankind ha, uh, has uh, looked, different ways in which mankind has looked at space, okay, has talked about space, has understood space is a history that needs okay, to, be, uh, to be looked at. And uh, please look at this slide a whole history remains to be written of spaces, which would at the same time be the history of powers. This, this is most important. Okay? The history according to and as you know by now, the key word in uh, or some of the key words in, in Foucault's uh, philosophy are those uh, like power, uh, like knowledge. Okay? And he says here that the history of spaces would not just be a history of geography, it would uh, as a cult exercise in, in theorizing culturally, in theorizing space culturally, it would be also concurrently a history of powers. So, a whole history remains to be written of spaces, which would at the same time be the history of powers, both these terms in the plural. From the great strategies of geopolitics to the little tactics of the habitat. Okay? So, space understood through a whole spectrum for instance here, he says that space is to be understood a as deeply entwined 
uh, uh, with power, with structures of power, with realities of power, with the dynamics of power. And secondly, the spectrum ranges from small, uh, you know, for as what we call little spaces like the habitat uh, that we, you know, places that we inhabit, spaces that we inhabit, to uh, the global scale, to geopolitics. Uh, that is understanding uh, the politics of geography of, of uh, you know of uh, of space. So Foucault very early on had in fact pointed to this the need to study space from a cultural point of view, particularly as deeply entwined by, uh, entwined with with the structures of power. Now space, uh, if you look at the slide, space therefore in how many ways? can we look at space in cultural studies? A few of the ways are mentioned here. Okay. A of course, we look at space as something physical, we look at space as place, we look at space as um, you know as, um, uh, as topography, we look at space as geography and this is one way of course, through which we look at space. However, in cultural studies as various critics have shown. Uh, space is also symbolic, Let's look at this slide here. Space is not simply physical, space is symbolic, space is also an abstraction. Okay. Instead of being a concrete locatable place, space is symbolic, space is further political. As we saw in the last slide, when we talked about uh, Foucault's insistence that, that space should be read, uh, the history of space should be written and read. Um, um, as a history also of power. And space is metaphoric, space has to do or creates identity and there are emotions or sentiments that are associated with space. Okay. So, in the first place we now saw that um, like other, other uh, topics or li like other sites for instance, okay, like the body in the last lecture when you looked at the body for instance, uh, space too is to be seen as something extra and be or beyond the physical that is symbolic, political, sentimental or emotional, identity creating and metaphorical. Now, uh, there are certain themes about space which, uh, which Nair brings to us uh, uh, in his book on introduction to cultural studies through a, the uh, through a theorist named Doreen Massey. And there are certain themes about space uh, that uh, he brings uh, to, the, uh, to the fore um, through the work of Messi and these are number one, space is a social construct. Okay. So, we have to discard our sort of commonsensical view that space is to do with something concrete, okay. uh, space is to uh, in space is a, that space is a given. Right. On the other hand, critics have pointed out that space is a social construct. Okay. It may be a little um, odd, uh, you know, at this juncture to look, uh, you know, for us to to accept the fact that space is not about landscapes or space is not about uh, topography, geography. That space is a social construct. But throughout this lecture, I hope through the works of the critics of cultural theorists to show you that indeed space is. Um, uh, space is definitely something that is social and symbolic. Second, the social is located in space. Okay? That is the first uh, point was what we saw that space is a social construct and the corollary of this first point is that the social is located in space. Okay? You, where, where does uh, the, the social happen? The spa social happens in a particular place. So, the first point here is the, the relation between the correlation between uh, the social and uh, the, the spatial. Okay? That is, this is the word the social and the spatial. Point number 3. So, see from space to social, we have now the theoretical construct social space. Okay? Social space is always dynamic constituted by social relations. Okay. It is not something flexible, uh, sorry, it is not something uh, that is static, it is, uh, it is something that is dynamic and changing and uh, why changing? Because it is constituted by social relations that are also changing from time to time. Next, space is also about power real or symbolic. 
Now, um, the, these are points that we will be unpacking uh, in a while. So, we just look here at the themes about space as given to us by critics. Uh, so, space is also about power real or symbolic, social space might consist of contradictory even conflictual spaces. Okay? It is never one space, but many spaces. So, final, final point here uh, uh, you know, is about the fact that social space is, it is not that these spaces are homogeneous, it is not that these spaces are without conflict. Okay? So, social space is also contradictory, it is conflict, conflictual and it comprises several spaces, it is not to be understood in a homogeneous sort of way. Therefore, the space and the social may be you know uh, may be shown in uh, in the form of a diagram as we have to understand uh, social space or the space and the social as being symbolic, being a social construct, being dynamic and changing, being contradictory, being multi-layered and being entwined with power. So, what is the scope then of this social space? Okay? What is the scope uh, of space studies as such? Uh, very broadly put, okay? uh, we may talk about three aspects here as given to us by, um, by, by space, uh, space critics. These are A, lifestyle. Okay? The scope of studying space as social space as you know, um, as as a cultural con social cultural construct, first impinges on our lifestyle. So we need to show how space impinges on lifestyle, how space creates lifestyle. Okay, and on the other hand, how lifestyle also affects space. Second, space definitely affects social relations, and vice versa. Social relations also uh, recreate uh, space in many different ways and space is to do with emotion. Okay? Space is uh, uh, you know deeply entwined with our emotions. So, if you look at the scope, so how are we going to talk about and how are we going to show space as a site? We look at these three aspects lifestyle, social relations and emotion. Now, let me read a bit from Pramod Nair's um, uh, text. Uh, this is how he articulates it. Space informs lifestyle because the geography of your home and office is often determined and determines your class and social status. So, let us look at this first. This is, uh, this is a two way uh, this is a two way happening. It is a dialectical happening in the sense that he says first we said that lifestyle is uh, what we need to look at okay, if you have to understand the social space concept. He says space informs lifestyle because the geography, okay, the geography of your home and office is often determined and, and determines your class and social status, right. Uh, the lay, you know, the, uh, the way, the, the uh, for instance, where your, uh, your home is located, where your office is located is not just a matter of geographical sites or geographical locations. Okay? It is uh, also a marker of your class and social status. Where you live determines how you live. Okay? The environment in which you live, even the physical locations of which you, in which you live, okay, these determine uh, how you are going to lead your life. That is, this determines your lifestyle. It informs your work habits and your modes of transport, the accessibility to your office, uh, how soon you know, or the time taken to reach your office also obviously determines um, you know, uh, if you have to travel a very long distance to your office, these also determine your energy levels, your time levels and your time for luxury, your time to be spent with your family. So, you see how lifestyle is deeply related to space, is deeply related particularly to your home, the uh, home env uh, 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 the environment in which your home is located, the environment in which your office is located. So, distance Okay. Distance, location, space, these are not simply terms uh, you know that we use only in uh, you know only in, in, in uh, studies of geography. Okay. These are, are these are realities that determine our lifestyles. So, it informs your work habits and your modes of transport, 
if for example, you live in the suburbs, then commuting to and from your place of work, this is what we discuss, uh, from your uh, place of work occupies much time. The options of driving to work or using the public transport system are open to you. The time spent on commuting determines the amount of time you have to socialize in the evening after all. Okay. So, this uh, you know the very location uh, uh, and the distance between your home and, and, and your office, okay, uh, you see how it determines so much in our in our life that determines uh, whether we have time to socialize, it determines uh, what kind of you know transport we are going to use according to um, you know and it also determines our class and social status. Okay. Therefore, this is again uh, let us uh, put it in, put in a different way, we see the lifestyle. Okay. Lifestyle is related to location, to time and to commuting. The next point that uh, I would like to bring to your notice is, uh, you know these are the two terms space and place. Now, the question we ask here is are these the same, okay? these are synonyms all right, but is space place and is place space. Okay? So, if there is a difference between uh, space and place. Okay, then why are we looking at space and not at place? So, we will be looking um, at this difference in the next slide. Now, in the social construction of space, we find that social relations determine the nature and extent of space and in order to understand this formulation, it is important to see the difference or look at the difference between space and place. The first and most important difference here is within cultural studies, within theorizing in cultural studies, we understand please look at this slide space as an abstraction. Okay. Remember I have I had mentioned uh, almost several times okay, that, that when you have a concept okay, in, in cultural studies, the concept cannot be too concrete. Okay. Why? Because concepts are ideas that have a certain degree of abstraction, because it should fulfill you know or you should perform the job of explaining many concrete situations. So, in that sense we have to have a certain degree of abstractness, uh, abstractness given to space. So, please look at this slide, space is an abstraction, an idea, a concept. A place on the other hand is this is the term lived space. Okay. So, where space is a uh, space is, um, a con in, is an abstract term, okay. it is an idea, um, uh, you know place is defined as lived space. Right? So, again space is designed on paper and in theories place is when people occupy that space, build on it, live in it. Therefore, place is about human experience, meaning and identity. So, you see the, the important difference uh, between space as a theoretical concept and place as something where human experience, meaning and identity are concerned, okay, are uh, acted out. In the social construction of um, uh, space, therefore, okay, what are what are uh, the the what are the terms that we use, or what are what are the entities that are involved in the social construction of space? And these are the ones. Please look at the slide: work, family, leisure, consumption, and privacy. We uh, how, space impinges on all of these variables. Okay. Uh, we saw in the you know in uh, just a while ago when we talked about work for instance, okay, the work place and how it affects our lifestyle. In the same way, uh, even in the family for instance, right, this how, mu how you know uh, how much space is there in uh, even even actual space okay, in, in a particular household will also determine um, the you know the privacy, okay, the privacy that individuals or members of that family uh, may enjoy, 
okay and it goes on further to establish also their subjectivity and their identity okay and leisure consumption places of consumption for instance uh, uh, where pe uh, you know um, uh, people uh, people even 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 uh, you know we talk about malls for instance okay the spaces of the malls the layout of the malls okay that also interpolates or beckons to us so work family leisure consumption privacy okay these are also determined by space and also in a dialectical way they determine uh, they determine space so when we talk about space and power remember the rela the relation uh, between space and power was uh, was insisted upon by michel foucault as we saw in a in you know just a while ago space and is related to power in the sense of a what is the uh, you know what is the access that we have to space or do we have access to all spaces okay do we uh, have access or uh, you know um, uh, the very fact that there are places where there are no or there are you know the space where there is no uh, uh, no uh, trespassing is not tolerated for instance okay there are areas in offices in which uh, you uh, to which you don't have, don't don't have ready admission right uh, these are also implicated in you know in par the acts the more access you have to space the more powerful you are reckoned to be so space and par are uh, are seen um, uh, are seen in access to space second the significance we give uh, the significance that we give to different spaces okay is also implicated with power and relevance of space and authority okay the authority uh, that you or that one has over certain space uh, spaces is also related to power access significance of spaces okay then the relevance of spaces and the authority we have over access and over denying or allowing access to others these are also points that one needs to study uh, when we when one looks at the correlation between space and power so um, we now move to another point which is a space which is a point uh, to, uh, to do with uh, cities okay okay since for most of us many of us um, uh, who live in cities who live in uh, you know urban spaces uh, urban spaces have been uh, you know within the broader rubric of urban studies uh, urban spaces or cities have have been uh, looked at by various critics and these cities are you know uh, uh, cities are changing uh, space is seen at its most dynamic okay in in these uh, uh, locations and it, therefore it is imperative that we look at uh, you know how we may theorize the city so for this we are uh, looking uh, you know taking the help of chris barker and this is the scope of studying the city that is um, shown to us by barker now it says that when we look at global cities for instance when we look at huge metropolises right we don't simply look at the skyscrapers we don't look at uh, the buildings we don't look at uh, you know the huge wide roads okay when we look at global cities these are of course the markers these are uh, the symbols of uh, you know huge uh, global sprawling global cities but we look at these through the political economy of global cities we look at how the city is produced okay how what what are the relations of production which enable the growth of such cities right what are the social relations that emanate from such relations of production okay that is uh, what is the economics and power behind the construction of global cities okay this this uh, you know um, going beyond the glamour so to speak and the, the the huge infrastructure of these cities uh, one way of looking or studying 
space in these uh, you know metropolises of huge global cities is true political economy and particularly uh, Marxism would help you here a lot in looking at the political economy of global cities. Next the symbolic or cultural economics of urban regeneration, the symbolic or cultural economies of, uh, of urban regeneration that is these are the markers that we had talked about just a while ago. Um, there are uh, you know cultural economics in the sense for instance um, how do I give you an example for instance the, the uh, you know the, the for instance um, if you look at uh, the casino okay if you look at the casino in uh, in very uh, huge well to do cities like las vegas for instance okay uh, if you look at again um, uh, if you look at uh, different commercial outlets different different uh, various commercial activities and cultural activities if you look at hotels for instance okay these are part and parcel of the political economy, but we call them cultural economies or uh, you know the symbolic economies of these global cities. Okay. Now, what are we may ask what are the symbolic or cultural economies of urban regeneration, right? when, uh, um, when these cities are being made and remade, right? what are the cultural economies that is one way of looking at space and what happens in space. Then, the emergence of postmodern cities as contested spaces, right? Uh, cities that are no longer, you could say, certainly not feudal, but cities that are that are also no longer modern in the sense that we understand it to be. Cities that are deeply homogeneous. Uh, sorry, I am very sorry. Deeply heterogeneous. Okay, cities that are deeply heterogeneous. Cities that uh, uh, in which um, very different lifestyles in, in which very different class situations are seen, okay, in which very different ethnic situations are seen. These are the, um, they are, these are the uh, you know, uh, uh, qualities or characteristics or, these are the, or rather these are the features of these huge global cities, where it, uh, be it Mumbai or uh, be it London or New York. Okay. These cities are marked by these cities are marked by, um, a, 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 you know, as I said, a deeply heterogeneous way of living. So the emergence of what he calls these postmodern cities, okay, as spaces of conflict. Remember, we found that in uh, in the towards the beginning of in the beginning of the uh, the lecture, we saw that place space is also conflictual. Okay, space is to be seen as sites of cultural conflict, right? So the emergence of these postmodern cities, which which um, uh, accommodate you know a uh, diversity of lifestyles a diversity of uh, cultures are contested sites so how the space is to be seen as a site of contest particularly in postmodern cities is another way of looking uh, of studying space in cultural studies next the idea that cities can be read as texts okay that you could cities are as we as we know cities or and, and space are symbolic okay they are not just physical topographical so we can also then read that is we can analyze okay we can explore and analyze we can uh, 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 you know critique these uh, these play, these spaces right as texts that uh, that reveal that reveal the processes of symbolization, the processes of signification. Okay. These are texts that tell us a lot about its political economy, the texts that tell us a lot about their cultural economies. Okay. So, cities can be read as texts. Then finally, the virtual world of cyber cities. Okay. Now, we come to something very different and I would be uh, devoting a couple of lectures towards the end of uh, the series of lectures on virtuality, on virtual culture, on cyberspace, etc. So, uh, one of the ways in uh, you know, I won't talk about it right now. One of the ways in also which we can study space is where there is absolutely no no space as we understand it in a physical topographical chain uh, uh, topographical sense this is the virtual world of the cyber city so what happens in cyber cities is also the discourse another discourse that has to be built 
So, if you look at the slide again, what did we see? We saw that uh, the scope of studying cities is indeed a very wide one, very wide ranging in the sense that we can study political economy, we can study cultural economy, symbolization, we can study contestations and we can study these as texts and also we have to have to uh, uh, you know develop new terminologies as we study uh, global cities and global spaces. Okay? Now, those of you who are interested in uh, you know in, in, in following this up, these are the ways in which you may theorize uh, in your projects okay, uh, on uh, space and the urban city. So, uh, studying the city has studying space in the city has a very rich okay, um, very rich discourse or rather they are very rich discourses in um, this field and uh, we will uh, quickly look at you know name you know some of the schools and some of the critics who are who have contributed to uh, studying the city from a cultural studies point of view. So, the Chicago school um, studies plant life and ecology, um, David Harvey a very well known Marxist um, scholar of you know of uh, geography uh, studies the city with reference to economic development, restructuring and investment. Uh, Davis studies cities uh, and spaces with relation to power and surveillance, Zukin to symbolic culture, suburbanization and gentrification, uh, postmodernism, the postmodern city is one of you know uh, one of uh, studies on the postmodern city is one of the most important contributions by Soya, by the critic Soya and information technology by um, Manuel Castles. Okay. So, you see these uh, are the different ways in which uh, the city may be explored okay, in space in the city may be explored. Global cities are also what we, what we may call command points. Okay, they are the very phrase here command points means that they, they are spaces that wield a great deal of power not only in, uh, uh, in their within their own space, not only uh, you know within the uh, within the uh, you know uh, economy within the political and cultural economies of only uh, first world countries, okay, but throughout the globe okay global cities are seen as command points of points of great economic and cultural power and when whenever there is a restructuring or a reorganizing or organization of the global economy okay there is also the restructuring of cities this is this is a very important point okay so cities urban spaces are um, a change in the urban spaces is relative to change in the reorganization of global economy. As these command points change, okay, these global cities as changes happen, political economic changes happen in these cities, there, uh, sorry in the global economy, uh, uh, the arrangements of the global economy, there is also a concomitant restructuring of cities. Therefore, we may summarize by saying that urban spaces okay, are to do with two kinds of economy. They are political economy and what we understand by politi political economy, let me uh, remind you once again. Political economy essentially or uh, rather simply put uh, talks about production, okay, the modes of production, talk, talks about the means of production and uh, also the social relations that arise because of these uh, you know because of uh, these modes of production. Okay. So, symbolic economy on the other hand are to do with markers for instance political economy is to do with the forces of production and the social relations of production. Social and forces and social relations of production 
okay. and of course, of distribution, distribution and consumption Okay. Along with that, the symbolic economy is to do with the markers, okay. so do with the symbols or it is to do with the signs, okay. signs of that emanate from um, uh, the state of the political economy in a particular given time. Okay. So, urban spaces or why only urban spaces? We could say that space in general is to do with two kinds of economies which are political economy and symbolic economy. Therefore, again looking at uh, summarizing it through Nair, space is not simply land or built area, space is made into place by everyday activities of people. Place is socially constructed through social relations, the spatial influences social relations and communities and space is about power to control access, representation and use. Now, spaces of home according to Nair, let us look at this slide here. Spaces of home is not simply place, not simply where we live. Okay, home as a place in which we live, okay, we, in which uh, we, there are various activities of, of living that are going on. Spaces of home use also the discourse of property and in that it is related uh, to social relations related to relations or uh, ultimately to relations of production and the forces of production. Spaces of home are uh, you know use the discourses of property. Spaces and home of home and housing are about lifestyles. Media urbanism marks cities increasingly linked to global spaces. Okay. Uh, the media and the city okay, together the dynamics of the media and the city okay, are linked to these global cities or global spaces creating their own symbolic economy, okay, creating their own uh, means and methods and sources of, of representation, sources of signification and of symbols. Now, the functional aesthetic of the home according to Nair is also linked to globalism. City development projects bureaucratize space okay, and city development programs exhibit a translocal urbanism. So, this is, this is uh, uh, again by way of continuation of how space uh, with to do with the home and the city okay, may be theorized by us. Now, uh, we will come to the discussion and just before the discussion a few points on uh, you know uh, to do a quick uh, recap is uh, what did we find? We found that space uh, is a not simply a geographical entity, b space is social and cultural. Okay. Next space is to do with both political economy which is the mode of production at a given uh, point of time including the forces of production okay, and um, the uh, you know the social relations of production and on the second uh, you know on the other level uh, space is also symbolic economy that is it is to do with markers or symbols and representations of space. Okay. So, these are the two ways we looked at it and third we found that the scope of uh, you know space studies has to do with things like lifestyle okay, for instance uh, to do with emotion right and in lifestyle for instance examples given were those of uh, you know uh, even, even simple location of your home and office would ultimately determine uh, things like your your way of living, your lifestyle, whether you have uh, enough um, you know social you know uh, um, enough time and energy for socializing socializing for instance. Then next is through Foucault we found that it is very important to study power as far as space is concerned, uh, because space is 
you know space is filled with power space is saturated uh, by power and these uh, we saw uh, particularly in reference to access okay in reference uh, to relevance of space reference of significance of space of authority one can have over space so we we then finally moved on to studying the city there are different ways of studying the city okay as um, you know both political and cultural economies of studying the city of studying the city has global you know global points of um, of the global city sorry of uh, you know command points and the power they have um, on a global scale then media urbanization and the representations of the media that are created okay so let's look at the question like how is space or social and not a merely material entity we would then say that space after dorian messi the critic we will see we will say that space and space is related to the social in that it is symbolic it is to do with power it is a social construct there is heterogeneity and multiple layers space is dynamic and space is also importantly uh, particularly in postmodern cities okay in huge global cities uh, space, uh, space is also a matter of social con cultural contest then show how space is related to class space is related to class through lifestyle okay and space is uh, is related to class in the sense that your very location or where you are located is um, will will determine your time okay will determine your commuting and finally it will determine the lifestyle that you have it will even go on to determine your identity and subjectivity then how is power inscribed in space is another important question we just saw that even foucault had said that the history of space should be seen as a history of power space and power are uh, you know inscribed both are inscribed in the other in the sense uh, that space is to do with access space is to do with significance authority and relevance all of which are issues of power okay so even access to or non access to a certain uh, space would determine your status of power then how has the city been theorized in space studies in different ways or, or you know of studying the city is uh, for instance one of the most important ones uh, way of looking at the city is uh, for instance by david harvey um, where the city is studied in terms of economic development restructuring and investment and city is uh, studied by manuel castles for instance uh, uh, through information technology okay cities are also seen as symbolic culture spaces of power and surveillance okay by different critics now i hope uh, in this lecture we've been able to show this you know uh, shift from a very narrow way of looking at the city no sorry looking at space as uh, a topographical given okay to looking at space as something invested um, with power something that is invested with politics okay with conflict right something that is invested or so, something that is that that has uh, deep uh, implications for the way we understand our, ourselves for the lifestyles that we conduct uh, uh, for our access to power okay uh, i hope uh, uh, at least we have been able to make this first step in theorizing space those of you who are interested in this may look further at um, you know these uh, these critics and scholars that we've been talking about in how to theorize the space from a cultural political economic point of view in the next lecture we are going to look at time okay a uh, time as i said is not simply something that you study in physics time is also deeply cultural uh, how it is cultural is particularly uh, you know as time as understood through uh, through uh, history and the way we carve out time in history and uh, we shall be looking at such a way of you know uh, studying time in our next lecture thank you for now